welcome and blessings. You're here at Ignite Humanity Live. I'm your host, Lady JB, and I am delighted to be here with you today. It's Tuesday. It's all about awakening. How can we awaken and inspire ourselves and wake up to new ideas, new possibilities, and what's available to us? Well, we're here on this show to inspire you and encourage you and give you the tools and ideas that you may need to move the needle in your life, to go forward and to do something so that you can ignite the lives of somebody else. And we all have to be thinking about what's possible on the planet, what's available to us, because as we awaken to what's happening in the world, we have to have the clear idea that we can do it. Every single thing available to us is possible. We just have to believe in it, set our mindset, and move in that direction. We're excited to be here today because we have an amazing guest that's going to share with you some powerful ideas as we awaken to what's possible in our lives. If you're sitting at home right now thinking, I'm not sure what I'm capable of, or I don't know, or it doesn't seem to be working out for me, we want to change that thinking right now by sharing some Ignite moments, things that have happened to our guests and to people that allows them to move forward in their lives. We all have Ignite moments. We all have challenging times. And yet it's those Ignite moments that inspire us and help us move in a trajectory that is going to make the difference. And many times it doesn't seem like it at the moment. But the reason we do this show is we want to show you that often your Ignite moment is the beginning, the precipice of the silver lining towards something awesome. And we all start with self. It begins with us because we are a mirror and we have the capacity to inspire others. And so starting right here, right now, right within you, what's possible for you? you make it possible for others to do the same. Well, if you're just seeing us for the very first time, we want to direct you to our website, ignitehumanity.life is where we share all the things that we're up to. We're doing a movie, a docu-series, an incredible compilation book, and we are building homes overseas. If you'd like to be a part of that initiative, go to our website and check it out. And let me just share that we are super inspired because at the end of the month, we are off to Indonesia to build two classrooms in an existing school called the Cla Ignite Possibilities Classroom of Hope and the Ignite Humanity Classroom of Hope, helping underprivileged children ignite their lives in literacy. We'd love for you to be a part of that project. Every single dollar you donate actually buys a brick out of recycled plastic that is pulled from the landfills. It's an incredible initiative and you could be a part of it, igniting the lives, igniting humanity. Go check out the link below. All right, without further ado, let's get to our guest because we have lots to talk about and lots to share. Maria Simone is a transformational business and funding strategist, speaker, executive producer, consummate deal maker, and author of, author of the upcoming book, I Can't Wait to Read It, Love Yourself Rich. She is the co-founder of Zen Moose Capital, a social impact fund that creates and innovates on purposeful media, technology, and real estate solutions. The Zen Moose portfolio of companies includes a number of media assets, including Tele Award winning charity makeover reality TV show, Operation Impact. Smart Moose NFT Impact Club and the United Tiny Homes, one of the fastest growing affordable housing solution companies. It's amazing. And she is here to share all of it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Maria Simone. Happy to have you on the show. I'm so happy to be here. I love speaking with you. It's, I can, Thanks so much. I, can I know you're day. super busy. You've been traveling. You're moving the needle on the planet. So I'm glad <laughs> that you're here because we really want to hear from people of all different backgrounds, all different sources, all different ilks, because I believe that every single person has to be focused on igniting humanity. And if each of us is doing a small incremental amount, we are going to make a massive impact. Share a little bit about what you're passionate about and what's really on your heart these days and one of the ways that you are igniting humanity. You know, I feel like, well, everything I'm doing is the culmination of everything I've done, really, you know, since the time I was a young child, and I have stepped into what I call my legacy work. It's like, what do I want to be doing the rest of my life? And I'm not, I'm not someone who's had an idea for an invention, or I, 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 I I've never been like that. Mine were more aspirational as far as raising consciousness on the planet and supporting the creators and the innovators who have solutions. To our most pressing problems and becoming a bank for transformation. Like I've other, I had, you know, I, I, it was mostly like as a supporter and lifting a lifter upper. And so not everyone has, and I always say this to people, you don't have to have like this wild idea for, you know, an invention or whatever, just be part of plug into 
you know, whatever is needed right now. So that's what we're doing. We, we, we have created, uh, it's kind of a convergence of everything that we believe in. We believe the creators and innovators have solutions. So, and we wanted to provide uh, support by way of funding. So we're building a fund, we're building an incubator, uh, and we're making the solutions as well. Like we're looking at problems and saying, okay, this, we have a solution for this. Let's solve this problem. Let's, so that's kind of how we're looking at things right now. It's two very important things. And I think every single person watching can relate to it. One, support, support others, be the person to give encouragement, to offer uh, a, a container where people can rise and, and improve. You know, even right down to a friend tells you an idea and you encourage them versus discourage them. You know, you be a helpful, a, a, a compassionate, a good listening voice. And then the second part was really about making sure that you're into solutions, offering solutions. Yeah. I think that's really, really valuable. How can we share with our listeners a way to be solution orientated? Because a lot of us sort of dip into the problem right out of the gate. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people wallowing in what's, you know, they're looking at, oh, everything's breaking down, there's separation, we're doing this. And there's a lot of focusing on that. And really what's happening is, I feel like there's kind of a, a, a breaking down of what's not working. So mm -hmm. instead of focusing on the negative of what's not working, I get hopeful and excited about the possibilities of, you know, what's to come. Um, and it's, it's so much, e first of all, it's like, de it's devastating to keep, <laughs> it's just depressing to keep focusing on the problem. But really, if you really look, you know, try to look neutrally and see what, what needs to emerge. You know, some of these breakdowns are creating more uh, union in, you know, with people. There's more partnerships. There's, more, there's new ways of doing business because of that, you know, because of COVID and some other things that have happened. So there is a transformation. So yes, I focus on what's emerging. Um, we, you know, for instance, we, we saw during COVID that there was a really a, a housing crisis starting to emerge as an affordable housing crisis plus homelessness um, you know, was happening. And so instead of wallowing in that and complaining about it, you know, somebody has to fix it, right? They should do something. Who's they? You or right. they, people. <laughs> do so. so I got a demo like, oh, wait, tiny homes are very agile solutions. Let's use that as for the affordable housing crisis. And we literally went to work building uh, a tiny home manufacturing company. And now we're part of the solution. And so we're having an impact and making money and we're having fun and we're not focused on the problem. We're actually just keep plugging into, you know, how can we solve this problem? And, and it's so much more gratifying. And we can all do that in little ways, even in our community. There were so many ands in there that I love. And we're helping and, and. and we're plugging in <laughs> and we're making sure and we're having fun. And I love that because it's true. Many of us see a problem and we just complain about it. We just keep grumbling about it. You actually looked at a problem and thought, you know what, there is a solution to that. I can be a part of the solution. I'm going to step up and step in. And I, I, if I understand correctly, you didn't know how to make tiny homes. That wasn't your background. You just oh, no, decided no, like you were no, going to learn and project. figure it out. No, during COVID, people were tending, building gardens and baking bread and doing, you know, they were just kind of nesting at home. And we, I was, I couldn't do a garden. My garden was fit. Like I couldn't do all the things a lot of people were doing during COVID. And I, we literally put this together. I did not have a manufacturing background like this. You know, I never built a house, but I did partner. And that's the other thing you, it's really important. We don't do, we, this is a perfect time in the planet to co-create with mm. others. We should not be in isolation. We, there's so many resources out there. There's so many people that are getting the same vision that you are. So you have you I invite everyone to be open to allowing others to support you and receive support. Um, in fact, my in Love Yourself Rich, the R stands for expand your capacity to receive. If you mm -hmm. can learn how to receive more money, people, resources, all that, you're going to have everything you need. And so I put the plan together for a tiny home company, not knowing how to build a tiny home. And then out of the blue, a friend of mine I've known for 20 years called me and she said, do you, I know you do financing. That's my main thing. We have a fund. I know you do financing. Do you finance tiny homes? And I was like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> no coincidence. <laughs> exactly. It was so perfect. Well, it turns out she had the same vision. She had moved her family to Arizona and they, they were partnering. They wanted to partner with someone to build tiny homes. Wasn't working out. So they wanted to do the manufacturing side. I had more of the, the business acumen. We had, we had money. We brought money to the table. We brought other resources. Uh, I brought new business. And we all four of us partnered together. And within two years, we're one of the fastest growing 
tiny home companies in the country. And we're the only company that can deliver within 90 to 120 days. So we are on That's mission nasty. to solve this crisis. Yeah. So it, it happened. I mean, if you can, and that's another, you know, something I really recommend to people. We get so caught up in the how, JB. Mm. I don't know how to do this. So I don't even get started. And you have to suspend all of that. If you're given a gift of a dream or an idea, um, it's worth it to explore it by way of saying, well, what if? you know, okay, what does this look like? Who can help me? Like, just open up to the possibilities that there's money for you to, to build whatever that is. There are people out there that have the expertise to support you. You know, this, the, the resources are always around you. And I think we just kind of, we, we do a bit of self-sabotage when we don't allow the, for possibilities, right? We, we, instead of saying, oh, I can't do this, I can't afford it, saying, well, what does it look like? How can I do this? How can I afford this? I think that word receive is really important because a lot of us have been taught not to receive, not to take. I mean, right when we're little, like no, someone offers you a cookie, you know, no, say no, thank you. You know, you don't need anything. This, you know, you don't need, don't receive. And I think that receiving helps support information, funding, uh, you know, data, learning, all of that is so important to move the ball forward. And I think that's a really valuable point. All of us need to receive and, of course, give in return, take our, our talents so that others can receive what we're good at. Let's go to the book a little bit. Tell me some of the other great principles, because receive is a wonderful one. What else you got hiding in that book? <laughs> well, you know, be more, I think... Um... Uh, I, I find that people are living more by default. Uh, they're living lives for others, uh, obligations, what others think of them. Um, and I, I, I don't think that's the way to be. I think you have to be very, um, you know, intentional. Um, you know, it, well, um, I stands for ignite your, ignite your passion, ignite your, just to have more energy. Put, as you put attention on things, you want to summon, and I show you how to summon your energy for it. So if you're, because what happens is when you, when you step into something that you want to be doing, you think you should be doing, and you learn how to be, ignite your passion and energy around it, then you know you're on the right track. If you can't summon that, uh, then you should be doing other things. And so I think it's really, it, it's kind of, so it, it, it t I teach people how to build, live more like in an energized state, more passionately with more purpose. They don't even have to have a clear vision of what that thing is, but how, how to summon that energy. And then they know, you know, how to step into whatever, uh, what, what to walk away from and what to step into. C is more about consciously chewing, choosing. As I said earlier, people are living more by default. And so I, I inspire people and, and teach them how to consciously choose at every moment of the day, exactly what you want to create. Because as you know, you will, you will start living that life. The more you set your intentions and get clarity on what it is you want to be doing, the types of people you'd like to start meeting, they're all around you. They'll all start showing up. But I think if we don't, if we don't start consciously choosing more, uh, as I said, it, it, it's all going to be by default. And how is more around allowing the how to happen? You know, we, we try to control the outcomes too much. And it, that's not, that's God's greatest jo uh, joke, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think of just stepping into living, living the light, like start choosing the things that you want, even you know, the b very basics of how, you know, w the things that you want around your life, the people that you'd like to have, the work that you'd like to do, be more, be more conscious about it. And then uh, without attachment, just start allowing, you know, those answers to start showing up, the right people show up. Um, I, I believe that when we have an, an idea to do something in our subconscious, the universe, God, the divine, uh, brings us everything that we need uh, quite immediately. We don't even know. It's not even in our consciousness yet. We don't know that all the support is lining up. And the moment you bring something in your consciousness, you only have to look around and it's usually, oh, wait, this person knows this. Oh, I already know this person. Oh, wait, there's, you know, there's all these investors around me. Like they're already there. They're not very far. And so I teach people how to just step. It's so, it, it can be so easy when you just step into that, you know, purposeful, more of a purpose and conscious uh, living. So does that it's make kind sense? of a, a toggle between the knowing, like you know it, you don't think it, you don't wish for it, you don't pine for it, you don't beg for it, you have a knowing of this is what you want to do, this is where you're headed. And then there's a little bit of that surrender piece. Would you agree that you surrender and trust and that you have the knowing to surrender that it is going to show up? Talk a little bit about timing because a lot of people are super impatient. They feel like if it hasn't happened yet, they're doing something wrong. 
you know, there's, um, I don't believe in linear time anymore. People are looking at, uh, you know, things have to happen in a certain timeline. I, I believe that, um, you know, it, 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 timing is funny because it happens. You can, you can start collapsing time by allowing others to support you. I, everything happens in perfect timing. And so, uh, the more you get hooked up on, you know, accomplishing something, then of course it pushes, you know, it could push the time away. But I do find that um, when you're ready, all of a sudden, like time collapses. I don't know if that makes sense, but don't, don't get hooked up on linear time. Don't look at, even when we're doing business plans, when we're raising capital, when we're doing things, don't say, well, in month one, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do, I'm going to accomplish this next month. Just establish your goals and your milestones and don't get so hooked up on the time. Yes. Yes. Time to help you move forward and do things, but don't have such high expectations of something happening by a certain time. So that's a, that's a, uh, that, there's a whole, we could have in a whole hour about that. <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> we, I don't even, you're going to take me down a rabbit hole and probably don't want to go there, but timing is very magical. And that is very, that is actually very key. Uh, yeah. And stop judging yourself. The more you, the more you, you, uh, and by the way, the love is the container that you put this all in and, and the love stands for, you know, it's really about, um, you know, having more self-love, having patience, uh, not judging yourself. I mean, you got to let, you have to just give yourself a break when all this is happening. So the more detached you can be for the outcomes, the more you can relax around it, the more that, you know, you know, you know, you know, that everything's going to work out. It's all going to work out. Um, the more, you know, the faster things come to you. And so that's really the importance of love. And I think that takes into consideration the time aspect as well. It's such a great point because many of us do get caught up on the timing. We do get caught on, on the achievements. We get caught on, even get caught up on what other people are thinking of us, you know, what's going on in Always. social media or how, how somebody else did it, how somebody else accomplished it, somebody else's timeline. I know that as a woman in business and obviously very successful, you've probably ha been in situations where you felt that you had to compare yourself or meet a certain expectation. Now I know that that's not the case for you. Any advice that you have for people who are feeling like, I want to step forward, I'm not really sure how to get started. Can you waken up some ideas on ways that people can just begin? I always say the hardest step is the first step. How do you inspire people to just begin starting their dream? JB, that's a great question. And I think uh, going back to, you know, people don't get started because they look at what uh, the success of others and they tend to, um, you know, judge themselves. Maybe there's some envy and, oh, I, I can never do that. And, and I remember when I, I encourage people to flip that script, flip the narrative. And, you know, the more, uh, the more we can appreciate others, the more we can give them our love and, you know, celebrate their success. Uh, number one, the faster it's going to happen for us. So instead of feeling that way, actually, you can reach out to some of these people. This is a good time w when you want to get started in something. It's a good time to reach out to everyone, anyone that you that could support you in giving you some mentoring advice. Now, you want to feel comfortable with that person as far as you, you don't want to feel like, you uh, you know, someone is, may have a, an, a, an agenda about you. But if you feel comfortable with someone, even if it stretches you, you know, I tell people aim higher. So go look at people that you're emulating that you'd like to be at and follow in their footsteps, reach out to them. And the perfect th question to ask is, I'm starting something new. Could, could I get 15 minutes of your mentoring? Mm. Someone who's successful, someone who's been very blessed with accomplishment or whatever, they're not going to be, you know, they're not going to deny you that. <laughs> Stingy with their time. Stingy is the word. I was going to say another, but they're, they won't be stingy and they'll be, feel very <clears throat> appreciative that you've asked. So this is a great way to allow others to give back. Mm -hmm. so and I a great way to people. It's and a great way to set the precedent for when you reach an accomplishment, you not be stingy yeah. with your time and give back really is the ultimate example of what we're doing to ignite humanity. We're giving, we're sharing, we're offering. It doesn't cost any money. We're supporting, we're helping uplift people. I want to take a few minutes to just ask a little bit more personal 
question, we always love to dip in slightly to people's Ignite moment. Was there something in your life that really became the spark for this passion that you have to do the work you do? I've had uh, very distinct, I've had three very distinct uh, things that happened in my life. Number one, when I was five years old, I was paralyzed from the neck down. And it was very painful experience. And I, I was, um, all I could do was move my head. I was just a little girl. And I thought I had like done something wrong. Like I had offended God or something. And I just was miserable and I wanted to die. And I was just laying in bed. And one night is a beautiful story, but I had a visitation by Angel Gabriel. And, and angels are very, uh, it's a very fierce energy, but I wasn't scared. And so the message that I got was get, uh, uh, you, you're not going to die. You have great things to do. Get up, get up. And that was really part of a spontaneous healing because shortly after that, I started moving around and then I, I was walking uh, right after that. And um, so that was a very profound experience, but I was left with, oh, okay, I got to go. I got to get going. I have great things to do. So like since then, you know, I've always knew that there was something for me and it's all, it's in all of us. We all yeah. have that. I just happened to get, you know, a direct message about that. Uh, and he actually, I got, I got the message again later on years later, but it was a more universal message telling people, get up, wake up. Uh, the other time was when I had a bit of a health scare and I was in a, I was getting burnt out. I had, had a very successful career in healthcare, but in my soul, I knew I was meant to do other things, but I was so comfortable and I didn't, you know, I would have had to, it was very scary to think of making a big change at that point because I wanted to start uh, new businesses, get on my own, but I had been very comfortable in what I was doing, even though I wasn't happy in it. And, um, and so it's contemplating, you know, how do I leave this? And which a lot of people do, <laughs> I think they stay too long in a situation they need to move on from. And I had a bit of a health scare <clears throat> and I'm, uh, fortunately I'm fine, but I had to, there was about uh, four weeks before I had to go for, a biopsy for something. So I, in that four weeks, I said, what am I doing? Like, right. I may, right? It's like, snap out of it. Like, this is your chance. And so really that moment propelled me. So I made a six month plan to resign from my career and, and um, step into my own business, like full time. <clears throat> but it actually turned into six weeks, I transitioned. So once I, you know, once I made the decision to allow myself to have it, I was committed to it. I started making a plan. It just happened fast and that's the whole part of collapsing time as well and so that's you know part of the energy that I put onto it and then the third part was more, more recently I was uh, I had a, a successful uh, platform as a speaker and consultant and I was hosting live events and um, you know doing the thing that you know and I, I was and I loved it I was sharing I was teaching but I was um, thinking I think there's more there's more there's more I should be doing more and all of a sudden I, I went through a transition in my life where my whole platform uh, tech like collapsed. My somebody had broken all my pages and tw and it, and it, it was kind of a, a being a menace and did a lot of damage. And in that moment, I said I would have to rebuild everything. And I said, wait, maybe I'm meant to quiet things right now. And mm. so I took a chance. And that was really that was you know I just pulled back from everything. And in that quietness, in creating the space in my life, and giving my giving myself the chance to not like just hustle, right? And know that I would be okay. Um, this Zen Moose Capital was birthed, all these other things was, was birthed. And so that was very profound. And so that was quite, those are three major Ignite moments for me. Um, but, and I wanna say something going back to, um, you know, people judging themselves. It's really important to know sometimes during these times, and it was really hard for me not to judge myself. Like, oh, look at, my friends wanted to do an intervention, but they're like, wait, you're not speaking out. You're not out there speaking. You're not doing this. I don't see you on social. Like what, what's going on with, you know, like, <laughs> like, just, like okay. it was like, they, everyone was freaking out. Like I wasn't around, but I, I, and I, this is the advice that I give to people. You have to create space in your life for your biggest transformations. If you're going to change careers or change something, you need that space for the magic to happen. And sometimes when it's quiet or we think things have fallen apart, it's, it's not that we judge ourselves. We think we're failing. We're comparing ourselves to others. You think of yourselves as, uh, uh, you know, you're pulling back the bow of an arrow and that inertia, that slowing down that space, that's not you failing or stopping. You're actually pulling back so you can be more powerful because when you shoot that arrow, you're going to be unstoppable. It'll mm. be 
we're going to make such a, a ripple effect on the planet. But if we don't do that for ourselves, we're always going to have these floppy arrows just aimlessly you know, going out there. So we try to remind people of that. I love that. Ding, ding, ding. Like that is so awesome. And of course, you're an angel because you're on the show sharing that advice with me, giving me and I'm listening and I'm taking it in. And I love it because I actually am doing the same, thinking of taking a little bit of downtime this summer to just really enjoy and you're right, pulling back the arrow is creating that momentum, bigger, better, stronger, yeah. more aligned and more focused and such a beautiful analogy. Well, folks, if you want to connect with Maria, here is her website. You can find out more about what she is doing. She's also going to be a guest on the Legacy Lounge. You know my other TV show that I do on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We talk about legends and creating legacy and how we build a business that is going to support others and how we step into the power of doing something that creates a ripple effect on a bigger magnitude. We're going to talk to Maria more about that. You can tell she has a plethora of information and is extremely inspiring. If you want to know more about how to reach us at the Legacy Lounge, we'll put the link below so that you can sign up to be a part and get a backstage pass to see myself and Maria. Thank you, darling. Love having you on the show. Big hugs and kisses. We'll see you in the lounge next time. And I can't wait for us to be in person and hug each other. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Take care. Well, folks, I love the analogy of pulling back the arrow because that means you can just get more pinpointed on what it is that's exactly important to you. And Maria gave so much good advice about not being so hard on yourself, giving yourself space and time to really unfold and produce what it is most important to you, to love yourself, to love what you do, to love your work, to be in a container of love so that that love energy really radiates to you and others. And that's going to inspire people. You want to have momentum. You want to believe it's possible. You want to know that it's capable for you. And it certainly is. Each and every one of us was born so magnificently, given so many gifts. And you have all of those, the potential inside of you to do exactly what it is you want to surround yourself with the right people, get great mentors. Uh, I encourage you to get great books that inspire you, including Maria's. And just really give yourself the service, the belief, the benefits of truly nurturing you because that is what is going to ignite humanity. All right. Well, if you want to know more about uh, what we're doing and some of our other mentors and episodes, please go to our website. We do have a fantastic platform also that allows you to see each and every episode and each and every interview completely free. We want to make this accessible to you in every possible way. And every day we have guests Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern or Mountain Time, 11 Eastern where you can see people igniting humanity and be inspired by them. And of course, if you'd like to give to our charity, we'd love for you to donate. And also, if you want to be on the show, fill out our type form and tell us what you're doing to ignite humanity, because we would love to showcase you. We want different voices. We want people from all over the planet. We want to hear how you are igniting humanity and just how you got there. All right. Blessings, everyone. Take care. Have a great Tuesday and we'll see you tomorrow. Now, more than ever. We need to come together to connect with one another. We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, rejoice, connect, create and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your ignite moment, show people who you truly are. Be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures.